Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the most popular horror games of all time, where it's about a security guard who must survive from the sinister animatronics throughout the night. On the internet, you'll find tons of fan remake games of all sorts. There's Five Nights at Rusty's, Five Nights at Charlie's, and uh, Five Nights at Ponies? Okay, but today, I thought why not remake the original game in the most basic game engine there is. Scratch, a visual programming language where instead of writing code, you drag around blocks. It's intended for complete beginners and mainly used to make simple children games. This is going to be a hard challenge, so what I'm about to attempt might be a big mistake. Alright, so here's the plan. I'll first make the main menu, then the office, get the camera working, and then add the animatronics. Then finish up the rest of the systems like doors, the power, and sound effects. I'm going to be just focusing on night one for this project. So to start off, the first thing I'll need is a main menu. It just sets the mood right and tells you right away what kind of game you're about to play. So anyway, we'll need to have various parts of the game menu for this. So I've went ahead and downloaded them. I've got Mr. Freddy right here. Let me just separate these images like that. So now I can make a simple script for this. Here I'm waiting for a delay and then switch between some images with a shorter delay for a flicker effect. And for a cooler effect, I'll put a white bar that scrolls along the screen. All right, now I'll just add the text and make a script to animate the buttons. Oh wait, that's not supposed to happen. Now here, for the intermission part, I'll listen in for that event. And if it's received, I'll gradually fade the screen. So now that's done, it's time to get into the actual gameplay. I'll have to make the visual somehow. Here's what I'll do. I'm gonna cut out the parts I need from a bunch of screenshots of the game. And then I can toggle between the states using the costume. Did you know Click Team Fusion, the game engine FNAF was actually made in, works pretty similarly and FNAF isn't much different from a point and click adventure. So yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing I gotta do is make the office itself. Now in the actual game, you look to the left and right using your mouse. But how do I do this? Simple, I just move the X position of the image to the X position of the mouse divided by minus 1.5. Don't ask me how long it took me to get that number, but good thing that it works now. Now, for the most important part of the office, the fan. I'll take three frames and play them back in a loop. Simple. Oh, and I'll also move it according to the mouse, just like rest of the office. Here are all the possible combinations of the light door buttons. Make them stick with the rest of the office. Now, for their functionality, this took a while. <sighs> that was a chore. It's time to add the most important part of the game, the camera. I add this rectangle, widen it, and add some lines onto it. And putting it into the office, I started working on the camera view itself. So here, I'll create a border and I'll make it trigger when the camera button is pressed and after the animation is finished, toggles on the camera static. Now I'll have the camera footage move left and right until it reaches a certain point and repeat that. All right, now that we've got the camera view working, we need the rest of the map to be viewable. Do you know I actually play the game? All right, so I'll add this mini map and add all of these buttons and assign a camera to each of them. Now it's actually time to add the footage to the cameras. I've gone ahead and taken all of the required images and linked them up with the buttons. So now it's time to put the animatronics into the picture. So in FNAF, the animatronics work by gradually advancing from room to room towards your location. They all walk along a different path. First, there's Bonnie. He starts over at the show stage and walks into the dining area, through it, and then into the West Hall. But he may also enter the backstage first. After entering the West Hall, he will sometimes enter the closet. Otherwise, he'll continue straight down the hallway to chill around in the corner. Then he will greet you at the door. Then there's Freddy. Freddy will start off in the show stage. He will then either go into the dining area, restrooms, or the kitchen. And after that, he will enter the East Hall. Just like Bonnie, he's going to chill outside of your door and then eventually enter. Chica, just like the last two, will start off in the show stage and then make her way into the dining hall. She'll likely rampage through the kitchen, then she'll approach you just like Freddy. Last up, Foxy. Foxy will just stay around in the private cove but eventually get out and run towards you. Okay, listen guys, so I know it's technically possible for Foxy to be active on the first night, 
but it never happens. And Freddy's not much of a threat either. So we're not gonna focus on this tool for this project. I'll create location variables for the animatronics and make the scenes change costumes depending on those variables. But before we continue, this video is sponsored by Zenva. Zenva Academy provides clear, beginner to intermediate level courses on game development using Godot 4, featuring an excellent free introductory course available now, covering all foundational aspects to kickstart your game development journey. As a subscriber to Zenva, you gain access to expert-led video lessons, comprehensive written materials, and engaging quizzes. Dive into hands-on projects, crafting games across various genres such as open-world RPGs and first-person shooters. Beyond Godot, Zenva offers content on Python, Unity, Unreal, and other essential tools. Subscriptions come with a 7-day free trial, and the first 50 to subscribe through my link below will receive an additional 20% discount on their first year. It's time for what you've been waiting for, the AI of the animatronics. Here's how it'll work. I'll set Chica's location to 1, the starting location, then I'll have her wait a random amount of time. I'll turn this into a function so I can repeat it. The function will change location and then call the wait function again. For the next step, I'll do the same for the rest of the locations. Each location is linked to another location, and if she's at the last location, she'll do the jump scare attempt, where she waits a different amount of time, and if the right door is closed, she will fail. But if it isn't closed, she will succeed. And I've done the same for Bonnie. Oh, and getting the rest of all this stuff took a lot of time there's so many different locations now the animatronics actually have to be able to attack you in the office so i'll take the image of bonnie in the door same with chica and there's the jump scare and here's bonnie's jump scare now think about the most thrilling situation that you can find yourself in fnaf 1. if it isn't jumping to close the door as you see foxy running then it's actually going out of power. So I'm going to be adding that now. Well, actually, first, to be able to run out of power, there needs to be power usage. For the power usage in the first states, there's gradually more bars, obviously. And then the third bar is yellow and the fourth is red. Now, I'll just put that on the bottom left and there we go. And now I'll take this image of the stats, cut out the rest and keep the usage. Get rid of the small green part and there we go let me just adjust it a bit so it looks good perfect i'll do a check if power left is either zero or less than zero to initiate the power outage all right after some trouble i've got it working now now for the night finish effect this text here will just gradually fade in that's it now the last thing we need is sounds i add sounds to the menu to the office to the lights to the monitor and so on and so forth all right well that's about it wait actually no there's been a lot of bugs and i've had to spend a long time getting everything to work properly all throughout this project but hey at least it's working now well i hope so i guess this was a cool experience and subscribe if you want a part two